All right, so it's not a snake, but that's a fish I've always wanted to see. That's a pickerel. Hey, you. There's a big armadillo digging around back there. Grotto over here. This might be the prettiest little cottonmouth yet. He's got not a cave, but a long-tailed. Beautiful animal. That is a gorgeous creature. We're gonna get him off the road here to make There must be something about the 11th hour. Cause Good afternoon to all those who follow the channel. Welcome to the beginning of uh, what may very well be the last wildlife adventure of 2023. Unless a miracle occurs and I get to go somewhere tropical during winter. Uh, we are coming to you currently from right about central Kansas and it is windy out here. Causing some real troubles with uh, gas mileage actually. It is wickedly windy out there. Hopefully it'll be better where we're heading to. Uh, tonight we are actually stopping in kind of very far east Kansas, uh, western Missouri. Gonna do a little road cruising, but it's just a stopover on the way towards the famous Snake Road and surrounding areas. So here's hoping we find some cool stuff out there. Unfortunately, due to dry weather, the road cruising produced nothing but a couple of run over snakes, and the next morning, though the beautiful wildflowers, as usual, I always managed to find, there wasn't a whole lot there either, so quick stop to look at some of the local cicadas that were just finishing up their year completely, and then headed further east towards Snake Road. Well, we ain't in Kansas anymore, man, we're not finding snakes. We did find a very interesting looking cicada. There are many different species of these guys, and each one has a different color and pattern. It's probably another one of the dog day cicadas here, though. Looks like this might be the only thing from early morning in Missouri here before we head to Illinois. Alright, sir. Oh, now you're just gonna play dead. Okay. They don't live very long either, though. Coming up on the crossing of the Great Mississippi River. And there it is. All right, welcome, folks, to Illinois and to the start of Snake Road. I'm gonna pause here for, eat a little lunch or something before I actually take my first walk out here, but and we're going to go see what all we can find. It's a decent habitat, that's for sure. Out on this side, of course, you can see they've got these thick ponds. They're full of food for all the snakes. And then a little hard to see through the trees, but there are some very impressive sheer cliffs right here. And that's what the snakes hibernate in. So when actually hiking on Snake Road itself, within the preserve, there's a few things that you have to keep in mind. And one of the biggest is no touchy the sneakies, which may be one reason why I will be here, but I will also be visiting a lot of other natural areas in the space so that perhaps I get a chance to hold some of the new species that I don't get to see elsewhere. Also got to be aware there's a whole lot of little buggies that will come after you, so wear some good bug spray. And there's our first evidence, and this I would guess is probably a Midland rat snake. A little shed piece next to a tree over here. It's not too old a piece, so he's probably been in the past couple of days. But a big snake like that could move a long ways in that time. Once again, even on Snake Road, the first thing that caught my eye was pretty wildflowers that I've never gotten to see in person. Jewelweeds are actually kind of special because they have a uh, kind of mythology surrounding them saying that they grow where poison ivy is because if you touch poison ivy, you can use the jewelry leaves to make a soap to wash your hands off. Really anything that makes kind of a soap will work to wash off uh, poison ivy, but these guys grow kind of in a similar area oftentimes because they also like the moisture that poison ivy likes. But it didn't take long before wildlife started showing up. All right, so it's not a snake, but that's a fish I've always wanted to see. That's a pickerel. 
It's like a miniature version of a pike. This guy is probably not quite full grown, but he's about a foot long and they don't get much more than maybe two feet at most. He's just hanging out in this really, really clear water here. It's so cool. There's the first herp that hasn't completely vanished from sight. I think this is a southern leopard frog that the camera does not want to get close enough to focus on. There was a very tiny frog earlier on the trail, but he disappeared long before I could actually get to see it. Very pretty guy, kind of bronzy colors. I'm gonna guess that's a very, very dark leopard frog there. Hard to make out in, for uncertainty. Because all his patterns kind of washed out, but makes him a cool looking frog though. And there we go. Right in the middle of the path. That is a young Agistrodon pisivorus cottonmouth. Not so young that it's still got its <laughs> yellow tail, though. He's been around for at least a couple of years. But he's not huge. He's only like one and a half, two feet long. And I'm currently standing about eight feet from him. Now, contrary to popular claim, this is actually the preferred behavior of the cottonmouth. They will sit, and they will hope that you don't actually see them. And if you do bother them, their next choice is to run away if they can. If not, they will sit and stand their ground and gape that mouth, showing off the cottony white insides. They do not chase people, and anyone who says that they do, you'll never ever actual get proof from them that it happened. It's always hearsay. These guys are actually one of the most inoffensive vipers in North America. And that's my very first one. He's quite dirty. At the moment, looks like he could use a shed. But they can often have really pretty patterns, especially when young. So I'm gonna try and get a photo on my uh, phone for the other channels real quick, but then we'll see how close we can actually get. All right, so now, I'm hardly three feet from him. Still well out of strike range. But this is the real behavior of these guys. And your head is all covered in dirt, isn't it, dude? Okay, there's a bit of his pattern showing through. He's actually got some really narrow light bands. Like, really narrow. But all he wants to do is get scooting along towards his hibernaculum, which is across the trail over here. There he goes. Checking things out. And moving along. All right, he saw me. And he's gaping his mouth now as a defense mechanism. Basically, it's only if I move that he will do that. Let's see. Or if he thinks I'm actually coming after him. Only barely caught that, because he's really still not all that concerned. But that sitting up position that's their classic behavior, too, trying to figure out if they can see what's a danger or not. We'll let him on his way. All right, you probably don't see him yet, but we're coming up on another snake over here. It's a second cottonmouth who is all stretched out. Oh, he's got some good color. He's pretty clean. Hey, you. Hey, you're a pretty one. Yeah, these uh, food generalists are able to make it up here in southern Illinois almost solely because they can travel from the waterways down here up to these bluffs where they can hibernate. Anyway, he's running away, so I want to get a real quick photo. Alright, and here's a third. 
hanging out. It's gonna go dive into this hole here. Let's get a quick photo. See, so here's something that I wanted to see for a long time too. That's a cave salamander. Bright orange guys. They like living in these moist crevices along the limestone too. There's actually several different species of salamander that are possible out here. This is a new one that I haven't been able to see before. I was in range once while we were in Oklahoma. But it's so cool to see that gorgeous adult. He's about eh, three and a half, maybe four inches long. And he's right up against the back of this deep undercut here. Which is about the safest place he can be too. That's so cool. So I can hear a snake crawling through the leaf litter over here. What is it? There he is. It's another cotton. So here's a snake he located by sound. He's a cruising along here on a much higher up bluff than the others were. He's noticed movement. And now he's going back to whatever it was he was doing. I'm a little distracted because I'm also watching a couple of harvestmen making noise over here. But, oh, he's got some nice pattern. Very dark, but beautiful. That leaf is hiding your face, dude. We can't see you very well. Hi. There he goes. That's so cool. He's minding his own business, as all cottonmouths are wont to do. Alright, finally one of these guys has stopped moving long enough for me to locate him. A little Blanchard's Cricket Frog. This guy's got a little bit of green on him. Unfortunately, he's so small and so far away, the camera does not want to focus on him. And the sad part is, if I get closer, he's probably going to leave. Mm. Oh, there's another one. Just off to the side here. So tiny and cute, but the camera just does not want to focus. There he is. These guys are kind of everywhere out here. Major food source for all semi-aquatic snakes. Well, we got a little gaper here, and he's got his the best pattern so far. He's also the youngest, which is probably why. Just a little bit of that yellow tail is left, too. There you go, that's most of the defense that you'll see from most cottonmouths. If they don't run, they'll sit and gape. Quite pretty. Beautiful snake. Yeah, I guess the road cruising could be productive. It's, uh, it's warm. Had a rough green today as well. I really hope the camera just caught that because we got 
owls out here. Go back up along the wall. See if anybody else has made it out. There's trails of stuff along here. I wonder if Salamander Friend is still over here. So heading back the way I came now, there's one of the pretty cottons that we saw earlier who's tucked himself deep inside a crack. It's very colorful, in fact. Actually, there might be a couple of them in there. All right, before he disappears completely, that is the biggest cottonmouth I've seen so far today. He's at least three, three and a half feet long and about as, about two and a half inches thick. He's got some good colors on him, too. Oh. There goes that tail rattling away. These guys are not mimicking rattlesnakes when they're doing that, by the way. That is a very old, ancient behavior. You see it in snakes worldwide. Rattlesnakes just happen to have a mutation that allowed them to take it a step further. He's not quite sure what I'm doing, so he's backing up to find a place to hide. So pretty. Don't worry, dude. We'll just leave you right where you are. There's a big armadillo digging around back there. There he goes. So I'm thinking this is a Mississippi green water snake. This is a new species for me. Beautiful animal. This is as far north as they come. Look at you. We get some other people coming up, but this is another water snake species for me. Gorgeous. Because Snake Road is basically as far north as these guys come, they are classed as state endangered in Illinois. So, including the protections that snakes generally have at Snake Road, these guys also have state protection uh, for them. So, you're not allowed to handle them at all in this area. And they're pretty common elsewhere, though. Beautiful animals ranging from the Florida Panhandle through Louisiana, and then they come all the way up through the Mississippi Valley, hence Mississippi Green Water Snake, to this point. They have kind of a distinctive look to them, rather washed out, green-brown coloration. The blotches on them are small and often hard to see, and a really blunt-looking face. They also have one of the largest litter sizes of all the water snakes known, with over a hundred babies recorded from a single female. All right, and right up here, third species of the night, there is a rough green Oh, he's sitting up in the tree, sleeping here. Pretty common animals. Cool, nevertheless. And it's really cool to actually find one sleeping in the tree rather than on the crawl for once. Beautiful. After he noticed me filming him, he didn't actually stick around for much longer. He went and relocated to a slightly further back bush where I couldn't see him very well, but these guys kind of reached their northern limit about mid-Illinois, so a bit further north than where Snake Road is, but not too much further. Uh, they're replaced further north, of course, by these smooth green snakes, which you saw the last episode in South Dakota. You saw that species that I found for the first time there. These guys, they're old friends. Man, this is probably the best look at a Leopard frog that we've had all night. Look at you, dude. Pretty bronzy one. It's just sitting here. It's so loud out here with all the bugs. 
So not much showed up on the uh, attempt at night cruising tonight, though maybe not too surprising. The rest of the area, it's either go up over the mountains where it was a little on the chilly side, or cruise through a bunch of cornfields. So uh, nice to at least uh, see some cool stuff on Snake Road, though. The cotton mouse, new species of water snake, and this uh, rough green hanging out in the tree. Uh, tomorrow, we are going to start off hiking up there during the morning and then kind of see where things go. Um, I may stick around there. I may head towards, there's a couple other preserves in the area that have records for like mud snakes and such that I may check out. We'll see. Uh, and then Thursday is... I might stop there again, and then we start heading back west through Missouri, hopefully pick some stuff up while cruising. But until then, if you enjoy seeing wildlife adventures like this, educational videos and blogs and more, if you'd like to help support that sort of stuff, uh, consider joining at Patreon or donating through coffee or buying stuff at the website, carltoncarnivores.com. All the links for that will be below, as well as the link to the main link tree, which has all of the connections. Uh, if you can't support financially, simply giving attention to this channel really does help. Watch the videos. Those watch hours are really important, especially as I start climbing up in subscriber numbers. We may be able to get to monetizing this soon so I can take uh, more trips to bring new animals to you guys. Uh, sharing the videos, subscribing, uh, leaving comments, all of that interaction really does help. And if you'd like to see more photos, uh, short video clips, and tidbits, I'm always posting on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. But until next time, I'm Hawk and Carlton, and this is Carlton Carnivores. Mm -hmm.